Okay, so this tutorial assumes that you've got a basic understanding of filtering and you've followed the tutorial steps so far. If you're new to ERPs, I highly recommend that you consider following the pre-processing steps as set out on my website, as the order I go through these in adheres to the recommendations from all the big names in EG Research. So if you followed the tutorials, you'll know that we're working with data that you've imported, set the channel locations for it and resampled it. This means you should have your data set either saved as a .set file or still loaded into your EEG Lab user interface. If the former, remember that you go to File, Load Existing Dataset to load .set files into EEG Lab. So in this tutorial, we're going to apply a high pass filter. The naming conventions of filters are very messy and inconsistent, but remember that high pass filtering is letting frequencies above a specified cutoff pass through and attenuating the ones below that threshold. So to do this, you want to go to ERP Lab, Filters and Frequency Tools, and Filters for EEG Data. Two main types of filters are used for high and low pass filtering of EEG data. Finite impulse response filters, or infinite impulse response filters. The difference between these filter types requires a fairly in-depth understanding of how filters work, but the practical implications of using an infinite impulse response filter is that it runs a little faster and can sometimes remove edge artifacts. Assuming you're running a fairly standard ERP study, it's pretty likely that the default Butterworth filter will serve for your purposes. Don't worry too much about display, although if you're not sure what this shows, I thoroughly recommend some reading around how filters function. Um, see below for links to my web pages where I cite a lot of good literature you can read through. Now we get on to roll off. So filter roll offs are often underreported and not particularly well understood. I'll try to briefly explain this here so that you know what roll off means, and then you can do your part and make sure you don't join the ranks of the underreporters. Filters are probably most commonly understood through their cutoff frequency, for example, 0.1 Hz. However, what's less well understood is that when you apply a filter, the power at the chosen cutoff frequency doesn't immediately drop to zero. Instead, there's a gradual reduction of power over a range of frequencies. How sharp or gradual this reduction in power is, is dictated by the roll-off. So I'll show you this quickly with a low-pass filter. Remember, that's not the filter we're doing today. We're passing the high frequencies with a high-pass filter today, but it's easier to show you in terms of the display window with a low-pass filter. Higher roll-offs, for example, 24 decibels per octave or 48, are sharper in terms of the power cutoff than lower roll-offs. Very sharp roll-offs can cause artifacts, so for our high-pass filter, we're going to choose a roll-off of 12 decibels per octave. Now onto the cutoff. Here we're going for a fairly safe threshold of 0.1 Hz as the half amplitude cutoff. It's really important that you report this is the half amplitude cutoff. As you can see, it's completely different to the half power cutoff. And actually, the reader isn't going to be able to tell which one you're reporting unless you let them know. For high pass filters, you rarely want to go above 0.1 as the half amplitude cutoff unless you have particularly noisy data, for example, from children as higher cutoffs can distort your data to an unacceptable extent. If your data is very clean, you might even want to try a lower cutoff, perhaps 0.05 or below. Finally, to reduce edge artifacts, make sure to select Remove Mean Value DC Bias. It's important to note this isn't an appropriate option if you're not working with continuous data, but seeing as we are, there's no issue here. And as a small side note, if you're applying a high pass filter to your data, you should always try and do this on the continuous data set prior to segmenting. You then press apply. And if you want to, you can save the data set, but assuming you're going to continue with the pre-processing of this data set, you can just click OK.